Promise Theory Part 3 Scaling Cooperation with Modularity and Trust by Mark Burgess In Part 2 of this series, we looked at how Promise Theory can help us to understand collaborations as networks of promises. Promise Theory guides us to engineer the mechanics of cooperation and to work around the fundamental independence of the agents. In that part two, we saw how the number of promises used to document collaborative roles grew much faster than the number of agents cooperating. That's because the agents initially have to promise everything explicitly and verifiably like an instruction manual or computer program. But something should strike as odd about this result. Surely it's not that difficult to work together. In daily life, we don't usually experience this overhead of promises hanging over us because it's hidden in fact, we get along with barely a nod and a wink. If the cost of cooperation always grew like the square of the number of agents, life would never have scaled up beyond a few cells, and communities would never have grown beyond a few individuals. So where did large-scale modern cities and global civilization come from? The simple answer is by trusting. In part three, I want to show how we trade detail for trust to cope with the costs of scaling cooperation. In other words, how we maintain predictability while delegating outcomes to other agents. In the beginning, when we're trying to engineer cooperation, we need promises explicitly to assess the roles of each agent. But over time, if agents keep their promises enough times, we can forget those initial promises and begin to trust in a routine pattern. Writing off the need to verify promises is how we scale information in quality and quantity. Trusting is really choosing to reduce the resolution at which we view a system of parts. So how does it work? We start by drawing a boundary around a collection of agents working together and treat them all as a single super agent, or so-called black box, that makes its promises collectively. Promises aimed outside the boundary are called exterior promises. Promises inside the boundary are called interior promises. When collaboration scales effectively, the exterior promises are not the same as the interior promises, so exterior agents don't need to see interior details. We say that a system is weakly coupled when the exterior promises are not explicitly conditional on the interior ones. This makes the exterior promises robust to interior details. In a strongly coupled system, the exterior promises are conditionally dependent on the interior promises, such systems are often fragile because a disturbance at the small interior scale isn't contained by the superagent. It propagates upwards to exterior scales too. For example, take something as simple as a glass of water. A water molecule, or agent, at the microscopic interior scale makes very different promises from the macroscopic promises a body of water can make. Interior water molecules promise their composition, H2O, and some attractive properties. Superagent water, on the other hand, is wet, but this promise doesn't depend strongly on its interior being water. At this scale, blood and milk are wet too, so the exterior promise of a bulk collection of molecules which we call wetness is not strongly dependent on the cooperative promises made by their interior H2O bonds. This is weak coupling. We use this same principle to engineer electronic circuits and computer programs from components that make certain promises. Televisions and computers, as super agents, seem to promise similar things on the outside, but when we verify them, their exterior functional promises are strongly dependent on the specific arrangement of interior promises. If a single component failed to keep its interior promise, would it cause an exterior fault? This is strong coupling. Weak dynamical coupling is the key to predictable semantics. Predictable outcomes make trusting the collaboration easier. The ability to approximate behavior by semantic scaling, or black box modules, keeps the cost of information low by focusing only on exterior promises. If we can eliminate most of the interior information without losing trust, the cost of verifying the details can be written off, at least until an interior promise is no longer kept. Now let's apply this to the delivery example in part two. There we compared an agent which makes deliveries on its own with a collaborative outsourcing approach between a warehouse and a third party agent. Are these scenarios functionally equivalent? 
The answer, of course, is that they're equivalent if we regard the delivery service as being part of the warehouse. Without any formal algebra, we can only hand wave about the two arrangements, but promise theory shows us how the conditional promises can be combined and we can measure their equivalence. Promises turn hand waving arguments into a clearer picture by treating semantics and dynamics, qualitative and quantitative measures, alongside one another. Suppose we start with the three agent conditional promises shown here. We draw a boundary around the warehouse and the delivery agent, making them a single superagent. Then we transform the previously exterior promises to one another into invisible interior promises that can no longer be seen externally. The conditionals on the remaining exterior promises now cancel out at this scale because their conditions are already promised collectively. When we coarse grain the cooperation of warehouse and delivery agent, they become insourced again into a single unconditional superagent, and the details of cooperation melt away. For example, if the warehouse company bought the delivery company. We can now trust the indirect three-agent cooperation as if it were a two-agent scenario. Trust is a big information cost saver. As long as the agents behave in a repeatable and predictable fashion, we can trust them without further verification. And going further, by engineering promises directly into infrastructure, we automate outcomes, increasing trust, because outcomes then seem more inevitable, more deterministic. The alternative is to monitor all agents' promises, like micromanagement, with a single eye to calibrate. This is an expensive bottleneck. Promise theory shows us how to engineer stable cooperation into repeated outcomes we can trust. Its simple algebra allows us to change our viewpoint, scaling up or down, without losing sight of semantics. In the next part, we apply this idea to itself and look at how the details of interior promises affect the details of exterior promises in more detail, paving the way to reason about architectures. <laughs>